Turn the fryer on. The display asks if the fry pot is full. Answer yes only if the fry pot is full. The fryer begins to heat. The process is intentionally slow to prevent scorching the oil, a protection necessary when using solid shortening. The on for 6 seconds and off for 24 seconds melt cycle can be skipped by pressing the melt cycle bypass button. In either case, the fryer will begin to heat the oil. Ignition may take a few minutes. Air must be purged from the gas lines. The cycling of the blue flame can be seen in the burner's sight window. The gas pressure coming to the fryer's manifold and to the burners should be checked during the commissioning. After the fryer has reached a full burn, turn the gas off and remove the tap over the manifold pressure test site. Insert an adapter and attach the hose for a manometer. Turn the gas back on to the fryer. Restart the unit and observe the pressure, measured in inches of water column, on the manometer's gauge. The acceptable range is 6 to 14 inches for natural gas, 11 to 14 inches for LP. Shut off the gas and attach the manometer to the burner pressure tap. Return gas to the fryer and turn it on. Watch the meter. The pressures should match the suggested pressure on the fryer's rating plate. Next, check the microamps flowing on the ignition module's flame sense wire. Turn the fryer off at the controller and access an ignition module under the controller. The red lead of the meter, set to microamps, is attached to the sense terminal of the spark module. The meter's black lead is attached to the white wire removed from the sense terminal. Start the fryer and allow it to heat after it leaves the melt cycle for at least a minute. The optimal output for a Fenwall ignition module is 1.7 to 3.0 microamps. The microamp output can be adjusted by turning the air shutter on the blower motor. The microamps should be red when the burner, as seen through the sight glass, is glowing red. Return the sense wire to the ignition module and replace its cover. Position a jib in the jib holder. Insert the hose and position the jib in place in the fryer cabinet, ensuring that the hose is not pinched or twisted. The fryer, as it heats, will pump oil into the fry pot, which was earlier left below the cold oil line. Position the crumb catcher in the fry pot. Training for both the store and tech is available online at frymaster.com, and a poster ships with the fryer that has QR codes linked to posted how-to videos on the operation and maintenance of the fryer. Check the software versions on the fryer and record their number on the commissioning form. Tap the home button on the controller. Tap the question mark. Scroll to the software version icon. Tap it. Record the UIB, SIB, VIB, and FIB software version numbers. Scroll down and see and record the OQS version. Scroll again and on fryers connected to Wi-Fi, check the signal strength. From the crew mode screen, tap the settings icon. Tap the manager icon. Enter 1656 and tap the check mark. Tap the date and time box. Tap set time and ensure the clock is set accurately for the local time. Use the arrow key to return and tap Set Date. Ensure the date is correct. Follow the same procedure to set the fryer for daylight saving time if necessary. Back out to the Home or Crew screen. From the Crew Mode screen, tap Settings. Tap the Service icon. Enter 3000 and tap the check mark. Scroll to the oil system type. Ensure the fryer is set to jib for onboard top-off oil or bulk if it's connected to an external oil source. If the setting is changed from the default jib setting, the fryer must be power cycled. Use the arrow key to back out and then tap Waste Oil. Again, assure the fryer is set properly. None means used oil is drained manually from the fryer. Bulk means there's an external oil disposal system. 
Front Dispose is chosen if the fryer has a front oil disposal quick disconnect. Again, use the arrow to back out.